Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today I've got a GPU scaling benchmark for you using the new Ryzen 5 5600, which will be compared head to head with the Core i5-12400F. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, though maybe not since AMD avoided sampling reviewers for some reason. Anyway, recently AMD released a number of new Zen 3 CPUs and one of them was a non-X version of the Ryzen 5 5600X. So the Ryzen 5 5600. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by ASUS's latest range of Intel Z690 motherboards, along with their ROG Ryogen 2 all-in-one liquid coolers. One of the most extreme Z690 motherboards on the market is the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero D5, packing a 10-phase V-Core with two 90-amp power stages per phase, allowing it to overclock the 12900K to the max. Then, for cooling your overclocked 12th Gen Core Series CPU, there's the ROG Ryogen 2 360 LCD AIO liquid cooler, packing a 7th generation Acer Tech pump, Noctua radiator fans, and an embedded fan for the CPU socket area. So it harnesses both water and air to provide high performance cooling. And for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so getting back to the GPU scaling benchmark, and we'll talk a bit more about the Ryzen 5 5600. So by dropping the X, AMD has knocked 200 megahertz off the boost clock, and they've also reduced the MSRP to $200 US, so $100 lower than that of the X version. Though in reality, that part is much cheaper these days. As it stands, the 5600X is priced at $230 US, with the new non-X version coming in at the $200 US MSRP, so a mere 13% off. I should note, at this point, the Core i5-12400F is retailing for just $180 US, so it is cheaper than the 5600, but we'll take a look at motherboard pricing towards the end of the video. Now, because the 5600 is an unlocked CPU, it should be able to achieve 5600X like performance via overclocking, and really we're only talking about a 5% difference in clock speed out of the box anyway. Today though, we won't be exploring overclocking, but that is something that I would like to look into in future content. Now, the 5600 was released on April 4th, but as I've mentioned, AMD didn't sample this part in time for any day one reviews which I believe was a missed opportunity on their behalf to dominate the tech news cycle for at least a week, but whatever, AMD seems to be doing things a bit differently these days. So since we weren't able to provide a day one review, and the 5600 and 5600X appear to be basically the same CPU in terms of performance, I've decided to be a bit more creative with our content, and I've gone with a GPU scaling benchmark instead. That said, we do have other plans for the Ryzen 5 5600, so you'll be seeing more content over the next week or so. But I felt like this was an interesting starting point for our testing. So the idea here is to compare the Ryzen 5 5600 and Core i5-12400F across a range of games at 1080p and 1440p using four tiers of GPU. And to keep things simple, I've gone with the GeForce RTX 3060, RTX 3070, RTX 3080 12GB, and RTX 3090 Ti. Both CPUs have been tested in their stock configuration, with the only exceptions being XMP, which has been loaded and I've also enabled resizable bar on both platforms. Furthermore, the same 32GB of DDR4-3200CL14 dual-rank, dual-channel memory has been used for both platforms, and the exact same graphics cards were also used. So for example, the same RTX 3070 was used for testing both CPUs. Okay, that's about everything, let's get into the results. Starting with the God of War data at 1080p, we find that both CPUs enabled the same level of performance with all four GPUs. The game does have a 160 FPS frame cap, and this was reached using the RTX 3070 and up, while the RTX 3060 was good for around 100 FPS, and this was with the highest quality settings enabled. So this is a well-optimized title that looks amazing. Jumping up to 1440p sees God of War become more GPU bound, so while we can't quite hit the 160 FPS cap with the RTX 3080 12GB, there's still no real difference in performance between these two budget CPUs, as the game is now heavily GPU limited. Next up we have Cyberpunk 2077, and here the Core i5 processor does enjoy a slight performance advantage, beating the 5600 by up to an 11% margin at 1080p, seen when using the RTX 3090 Ti and RTX 3080. The margin for the average frame rate was reduced to just 3% with the RTX 3070, but the Intel CPU was 12% faster when looking at the 1% lows. Then as we drop down to the RTX 3060, the game becomes heavily GPU limited, and now both CPUs are restricted to the exact same level of performance. 
Now, increasing the resolution does increase the GPU bottleneck, and now we're looking at comparable performance right up to the RTX 3080 with identical performance seen with the 3070 and 3060. The 12400 f did stretch its legs a little with the RTX 3090 Ti, offering up to 8% greater performance as it pushed up to 105 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows up to a 10% performance advantage for the 12400F, seen with the RTX 3080. Oddly, the margin is reduced to 6% with the RTX 3090 Ti, but I do wonder if we're running into an AMP architectural bottleneck at this low resolution. Either way though, the Intel CPU was faster with these high-end GPUs, whereas we saw the exact same performance using the RTX 3070 and 3060. Of course, increasing the resolution does increase the GPU load and therefore shifts the performance limitations more in the GPU direction. So here frame rates are identical using the RTX 3080, 3070 and 3060. The 12400F was up to 7% faster with the RTX 3090 Ti, seeing we're looking at the 1% lows, but you can expect to see no difference between these two CPUs at 4K, even with the RTX 3090 Ti. So Hitman 3 runs into a hard CPU bottleneck at 1080p, even with the RTX 3070. The Zen 3 architecture is limited to around 154 FPS and Elder Lake at about 158 FPS. Interestingly, even with the RTX 3060, we find that Elder Lake is a few frames faster, and this was consistently seen across our Hitman 3 testing. Moving to 1440p does once again increase the GPU bottleneck, and now we're seeing virtually no difference between these two CPUs, even with the RTX 3090 Ti. The Rift Breaker has proven to be quite a horrible title for AMD, and here we're seeing a pretty strong CPU bottleneck with the Ryzen 5 5600, even with the RTX 3070, where the 12400F was up to 27% faster, seeing we're looking at the 1% low data. That margin grew with the 3080 and 3090 Ti, and here the Intel CPU was up to 34% faster, which is a massive performance margin. Even at 1440p, the 12400F enjoyed a commanding lead, though this was really only seen with the RTX 3080 and 3090 Ti. But still, it was up to 33% faster, which is a very significant margin. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, we find when using the RTX 3060 and 3070 that the game is heavily CPU limited, delivering the same performance using either the Core i5 or Ryzen 5 processor. Then with the faster 3080 and 3090Ti, the 5600 is 9-10% faster than the Core i5 competition, so a reasonable performance advantage here for AMD. That margin though shrunk to 5% at 1440p with the RTX 3090Ti, while we saw virtually no difference with the 3080, and really no difference with the 3070 and 3060. Next we have F1 2021, and here the 12400F provided stronger performance with the higher end GPUs. For example, the RTX 3090 Ti saw a 16% improvement to 1% lows with the Core i5 part, and a 7% boost to the average frame rate. That margin was reduced to 10% for the 1% lows with the RTX 3080, and just 4% for the average frame rate. Then we're looking at basically identical performance using the 3070 and 3060. Then we see that jumping up to 1440p once again reduces the margin seen between these two mid-range CPUs, and it's really only the RTX 3090 Ti data where we see a reasonable disparity in performance. The average frame rate was similar, but the 12400F was 14% faster when looking at the 1% lows. The second last game tested is Rainbow Six Extraction, and here both models are very competitive, delivering basically the same gaming experience. By the time we reached the RTX 3080, the game was entirely CPU bound, hitting 300 FPS. And that being the case, as you'd expect, the 1440p data is very similar, though this time we are entirely GPU bound. Last up, we have Far Cry 6, and this one quite heavily favors the Core i5 12400F, delivering up to 13 to 14% more performance, seen with the RTX 3080 and 3090 Ti. Then with these slower GPUs, there's little to no performance difference. And once again, increasing the resolution to 1440p does reduce the margin, with the RTX 3080 and 3090 Ti now in the range of 7 to 8% in favor of the Core i5 processor. And of course, we're looking at no change in performance using the RTX 3070 and 3060. Okay, so here's a look at the nine game average data, calculated using the geo mean, and we'll start with the 1080p results. On average, the 12400F was 8% faster when comparing 1% lows, and 5% faster for the average frame rate, so not huge margins, but the Elder Lake CPU was clearly faster overall. We're also looking at similar margins with the RTX 3080, so for high frame rate gaming, the 12400F does look to be the better option. 
Now dropping down to the RTX 3070, this did see margins reduced, especially for the average frame rate. And then for the 1% lows, the 12400 f was 6% faster. So certainly not a big difference here, but for those of you using lower quality settings in an effort to maximize frame rates, maybe for competitive gaming, let's say, the 12400F will be the way to go. Then with the RTX 3060 performance is identical. So it really doesn't matter which CPU you use for this level of GPU performance. That said, if you're gonna game with an RTX 3060 or RX 6600 XT at 1080p using medium quality settings, the margin will open up in Intel's favor, though not significantly so. And then moving to 1440p again shows when dipping below 144 FPS, there isn't a big difference between these two CPUs. And at around 100 FPS, there's really no difference. The 12400F really doesn't jump ahead by a notable margin until you start pushing up over 140 FPS, at least in most titles. And even then it was only up to 9% faster on average with the RTX 3090 Ti. So that's how the Ryzen 5 5600 and Core i5-12400F compare across nine games at 1080p and 1440p using four tiers of GeForce GPUs. As you would probably expect, they are very evenly matched for the most part, though overall the Intel CPU is faster. And it's worth noting that of the nine games tested, AMD did hit the lead in just one of them, being Horizon Zero Dawn. Where the 12400F dominated were in games that lean heavily on the primary thread, and that doesn't just mean games like Far Cry 6. The Rift Breaker, for example, that heavily utilizes modern CPUs, spreading the load across many cores, but like most games, it still relies heavily on single core performance as the primary thread is hit the hardest. And again, this can give the 12400F quite a substantial performance advantage. Typically a best case result for the 5600 will be the same or similar performance, like what we're seeing in Rainbow Six Siege Extraction and God of War, for example. Of course, how much of a performance difference there will be depends on the game and the quality settings used. If you're typically going to be using the highest quality settings your GPU can handle with a sort of 60 to 90 FPS target, then there's going to be little to no difference between these two CPUs, and that will likely be the case well into the future. However, if you're more interested in high refresh rate gaming, so 144 FPS plus, then the 12400F will often prove to be the better option, delivering up to 33% stronger performance seen in the Rift Breaker, though I expect that'll prove to be an extreme case. So in short, for casual gamers, it doesn't really matter which one of these CPUs you go with. For competitive gamers though, I'd suggest the Core i5-12400F. But before we get too deep into the recommendations, let's check out the pricing. As noted earlier, the Ryzen 5 5600 costs $200 US, while the Core i5-12400F is slightly cheaper at $180 US. The only other factor here that needs to be considered is of course the motherboard. In my opinion, the best value B660 board is the MSI B660M-A Pro, which currently costs $150 US for the Wi-Fi version or $140 US for the non-Wi-Fi model. And then the equivalent AMD B550 board would be the MSI B550-A Pro, which also costs $150 US, though that board doesn't come with a Wi-Fi option. So if you're looking at pairing either of these CPUs with a decent spec board, pricing is really much the same at around $140 to $150 US. Now the absolute cheapest B660 board available in the US that I'd buy is the MSI B660M-A Pro. So $140 US is the minimum amount of money I would spend if going with Intel. For AMD though, the cheapest B550 board you could go with would be the Gigabyte B550M DS3H for just $100. It's certainly not a great board, but it does work. The MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi is also a decent board at $120 US. So over in the US, you could save $20 to $40 on the board by going with the Ryzen 5 5600, saving you at most $20 for the entire package. That being the case, for those of you upgrading your platform or building an entirely new PC, the Core i5-12400F with a decent B660 board seems like the way to go. The only real reason you'd go with the Ryzen 5 5600 would be if you already had a solid AM4 board, meaning the 5600 would be a drop-in CPU upgrade. It's worth noting, however, that here in Australia, the comparison is slightly more favorable for AMD. Here, the 5600 is just $15 AUD more, so a mere 6% price premium, and then B660 boards are just much more expensive. The MSI B660-A Pro, for example, costs a staggering 41% more than the B550-A Pro at $240 Australian, opposed to $170 Australian. And then the Gigabyte B550M DS3H, that can be had for just $115. 
That means the 12400F is a mere 12% more expensive when using a quality motherboard or 27% more than the 5600 plus B550M DS3H combo. So here in Australia, at least, you can buy into the AM4 platform for quite a bit less, and I don't think the 12400F is worth an almost 30% premium for the CPU and motherboard combo. Granted, however, the 12400F was up to 30% faster, so if pricing in your region reflects what I'm seeing here locally, then you will need to carefully evaluate your options depending on how you play games. It is worth noting that you can overclock the Ryzen 5 5600 to improve performance. Of course, your mileage here will vary, and I wouldn't expect huge gains, but you will be able to close down the gap to the 12400F if you enjoy tinkering. The advantage of Intel's LJ1700 platform is the fact that it will support another CPU generation. So if you were to buy the 12400F now, it's conceivable that upgrading to a Raptor Lake Core i7 in the future would be of benefit, providing you've got a decent B660 motherboard. On the other hand, the 5600 is really limited to Zen 3 CPUs that we already have as potential upgrade options, and of course the upcoming Ryzen 5 5800X 3D, though I don't expect that CPU will ever be particularly affordable. Now if I get time I would like to compare these CPUs across a wide range of games, and something I will be doing shortly is comparing a complete Ryzen 5 5600 gaming PC with a complete Core i5 12400F gaming PC. And the idea here is that Tim will build both computers, which he's in the process of doing, and the only differing components of each computer will be the CPU and motherboard. I'll then test them out to see just how different they are to game on, looking at everything from frame rates to thermals and power consumption. I'll also tune both systems to see what you can extract from them with a little bit of effort. So make sure you're subscribed for all of that. And that is going to do it for this video. If you liked it, do give it a like. As I said, there'll be more Ryzen 5 5600 and other the 5500, 5700X, a uh, few other older CPUs or CPUs based on previous architecture. So there's a lot more Ryzen CPU action coming and plenty of other content coming up on the channel. So yeah, make sure you subscribe for that. Also, if you'd like to get involved with the Harbour Unboxed channel directly, get access to our exclusive Discord server where you can chat with Tim, myself, the rest of the awesome community there. Uh, we have behind the scenes content. Q and A's, and we do a monthly live stream for Float Plan and Patreon members, which is always a lot of fun. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, then links are in the video description to Float Plane or Patreon, pick whichever one you like. And yeah, we'd much appreciate your support. And as I said, it's a really cool community there. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.